Hello and welcome. My name is Bettina Ray. Thank you for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about why you are terrified of birth and what the hell you can there do. There are so many women who reach out to me every day over on Facebook or Instagram whenever I post something about pregnancy, yoga, birth, about being terrified of what's to come, especially first time mums, but not always. Sometimes second or third time mums have had really terrible experiences and they're trying to create something better next time around and they don't know even where to start or what to do. So today I just want to chat to you first about why you're feeling this way and why it's totally normal. So why we have fear around birth. Number one, if you've never done it before, fear of the unknown is always there. So whenever you start something new, there's always that sense of fear that I don't know how this is going to go, I don't know how to control it. Um, and you get that, that fear of dread within you. So number one, the fear of the unknown. The second thing is you've probably only ever heard negative stories for some reason. And if this isn't true for you, awesome. But for most of us, we like to share the negative stuff. So nobody's going around telling stories about how amazingly blissful their birth was and how connected they felt and how empowered they were afterwards, unless you read the right blogs, of course. But for most part in our society, people go around telling you about how traumatic their birth was, um, all the things that went wrong. And the reason we do this is because there's no real space in our society to vent or to, um, to share that story so we can get past it. Like I honestly think women after birth, even if it's a very uncomplicated, natural, everything went well birth, need a space to talk about it, to kind of get it out of their system, to um, not get past the trauma of it, but to kind of reconcile it with everything else. It's such a powerful event. It takes over your entire body that to just move on and get past it without having a discussion with someone about it can kind of feel, leave you feeling a little bit like, oh, I don't know how to process that. So I really wish we all had that space to come together and, and share those stories in a space that's not as soon as we see someone who's pregnant telling them all the horrible things. So if you've already announced your pregnancy, you've probably found that everyone's telling you their negative stories. Um, and you've probably already seen on TV or on movies, all the negative um, images of birth that are out there. Rare. So for a movie or a television show to show birth as a non-stressful event. It's always someone screaming, someone shouting push. They're like, <laughs> and everyone's panicking. People are fainting. It's always very dramatic. But you know what movies are like. They, they thrive off the drama. So that's why it's there. It's not because that's an accurate representation. If you're watching One Born Every Minute, please turn it off and stop watching that show. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. So once upon a time, birth was not this big stressful event. It was quite an ordinary everyday event. Um, women were supported by other women. They had their babies at home. There was this real culture of family and community. So um, there wasn't even the need to go to hospital. It was just something that you did at home. And if there was a problem, then you call a doctor, not in a normal everyday birth. So with the invention of this drug to knock people out um, during birth, people were requesting that during birth. And so of course, in order to administer the drug, they had to be in hospital. And unfortunately at the time, hospitals weren't the cleanest of places. They didn't really understand about hygiene and how you couldn't go treat someone who'd been vomiting and very ill and then go and treat a mother who is delivering a baby without washing your hands. Um, and so the two things combined, the, the germs that were there and the fact that they were knocking you out. So not being knocked out is not the ideal position to give a birth if you can't physically be active. So of course then once you're knocked out, uh, medical intervention had to come in. So they had to use forceps, um, suction, and that obviously upped the rate of injury to the woman and made it more of a traumatic event, which meant those women then went home 
told their sisters and their mothers and their daughters about what had happened and the fear around birth increased and the more afraid you are the more tense you are the more you believe it's going to be painful and scary the more likely it is and then this perpetuated and here we are still giving birth in hospitals and whilst our hospitals have come a long way um, I think we're only on the up cycle again to seeing the real value in not intervening in birth and why interventions or how interventions can actually make the situation more scary and um, require that further interventions happen and end in things like cesarean. Whew, that felt like a long story. <laughs> Sorry about that. So it's not unusual that you're afraid was basically my point. History, fear of the unknown, and all the stories that you're seeing visually in our media, as well as the stories that people are telling you, all lead you to this place of feeling afraid. So if you are in that place, please don't bury your head in the sand like I did during my first pregnancy, it doesn't help. What you need to do is number one, educate yourself. So read Ina May's Guide to Natural Childbirth. I'll put the links under this video. Read Hypnobirthing by Marie Mongan. Do a hypnobirthing course or a calm birth course or my birth flow course. It doesn't really matter what brand it is. They're all essentially the same thing. Just do one and educate yourself on how your body works and how you can use breathing techniques and relaxation techniques to have an actually enjoyable birth. Like I'm not going to lie to you. It will be painful. There will be elements that will be scary, but it can be empowering and it can be amazing and you can want to do it all again the next day if you know how your body works and you feel empowered going into it. And on that note, even if you end up in a cesarean after you've gone and learnt how your body works, at least you can go into that knowing this solution is what I need. It's not just what's happening because I haven't informed myself. It's not just what I'm picking. You want to go into that feeling like this was my decision and aren't I lucky to live in this century when medical intervention can help me when I need it? Because that's fine. If you need it, awesome. Because I'm the first one to say medical intervention is awesome, but only when it's needed. And I think there's a really fine line between needing it and just going that way because we haven't educated ourselves on how the body works and how we can work with it. So I hope that helps. Please know that fear is totally normal. I will release another video soon on how you can deal with the fear, so fear release and that sort of thing. Some of us spend more time researching prams than we do researching birth. So please take that time to learn how your body works and how you can work with it. Have a beautiful day and I cannot wait to hear about the safe arrival of your bub. Namaste.